Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Dr. Derek Gatta here. Very excited to be back. Um, today we're going to be looking at how to articulate your hybrid cases and also how to assess vertical dimension and restorative space. So uh, first off, also pretty pumped. We're up to about three subscribers on the YouTube channel, so we're really rocking and rolling now. So uh, please spread the word and keep, uh, keep up the good work if you're finding value in these videos. <clears throat> All right, so go ahead and envision. I had to dismiss my patient, but how to articulate what we have here. So we have using 3i implants with uh, low profile abutments working at tissue level. Uh, six maxillary implants and five mandibular. And envision this patient with their provisional hybrids uh, screwed in place here. So that's basically what I do. So I make a face bow of my patient wearing their provisional maxillary restoration. And once that's on the face bow, I can go ahead and articulate the maxillary cast. And to articulate the mandibular cast, I again just make a CR bite relation record when the patient's wearing both maxillary and mandibular uh, provisional hybrids here. <clears throat> so again, apologize that my, I don't have the provisional restorations on the cast, but my patient, you know, kind of has to chew with them, so he uh, left. But you can kind of envision what I'm talking about here, where if both restorations were screwed in place, you would be able to articulate your case. Now, <clears throat> to really add some value to what your lab ceramists are going to do, you want to cross articulate these with your alginates of the actual provisional restorations. So again, once my patient gets in the chair, usually what I do is I first make alginate impressions of the of the uh, provisional hybrids and, and I pour those up and while this cast is setting, I can go ahead and articulate the tissue level casts. So again, envision the patient's uh, mandibular provisional hybrid is screwed onto the cast, and that way I can go ahead and articulate the alginate of the maxillary provisional. And again, do the same thing with the mandible. That cast is poured up, articulated, and boom, you've got cross-articulated tissue level casts with your provisional restoration casts. And this provides a lot of information for your lab ceramists as they're going ahead and get ready to fabricate your titanium bars and your final restoration. Now also, uh, some people have been asking me, you know, how do you evaluate restorative space when you're looking at these types of restorations? Well, that is a great, great issue I like to kind of shed light on. So again, you need your patient's provisional hybrid restoration to do this and envision that restoration is screwed on the cast here and then you're going to make a silicone matrix of that restoration and boom, you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. You've got incisal edges all envisioned and connected here and the way to do this without having your silicone matrix wobble is to index it. So I cut notches onto the cast and that way, the matrix snaps right back into place. So you want to do this for the facial and for the lingual, because that provides a lot of good information for your lab ceramists about tooth position when you're making your titanium frameworks. And this concept of restorative space, a lot of people were kind of confused on that, and I know I was when I was finishing residency uh, not too long ago here. And with this silicone matrix, you can see exactly let me get it in focus, what your restorative space is. So again, from tissue level to incisal edge, we've got about 19 millimeters. So we're, we're pretty, pretty golden on ability to have room for your titanium bar, your acrylic, and your teeth. Because 15 is about that magic number from uh, platform level to incisal edge. And we're working at tissue level here, so that eats up a little bit of the restorative space. So again, same thing on the maxillary cast. I made silicones when the patient's, provi patient's provisional hybrid is in place. And you can see what we're looking at here. 
kind of an angle, but about 18 millimeters to the incisal, incisal edge. I'll put the buckle on it and probably get a better view from the buckle. All right, I'll try and get it close up there. Yeah, so we're right at about 15 here, so I have a little bit more room in the mandible. But I hope that really helps to provide some insight as to how you assess uh, restorative space and how to articulate your casts. And also, once I get to this point, I like to make a verification jig. So this is just impression copings, and I use some floss and some acrylic polymethylmethacrylate to bind everything together. I make it in the lab in segments because you got to kind of account for the contraction and the shrinkage of the acrylic. And I try it in the mouth, make sure it matches what it is on the, on the patient, and there's no rocking here. On the maxillary cast, there was some rocking, so I actually cut it right down the middle and re-applied um, acrylic intraorally. So I have the patient come back <clears throat> and apply the acrylic salt and pepper technique in the mouth to make sure there's no wobble. And that way I can get this scanned and copied and I'll, I'll trim it up and make it look a little nicer. Um, but I'd like to try and do a copy mill style restoration here for my patient. All right. Uh, so again, appreciate your feedback, guys. And uh, please leave comments. And uh, you guys can follow me on Facebook and Instagram, uh, Dr. Derek Gatta, if you want to learn more about this case and uh, spread the word so I can continue to help more people. All right. Take care.